Good afternoon, Scott Rella T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So this is Monday. We came in after a long holiday weekend, and I guess we had a bit of a sluggish tape. Yes, the market does not go up every single day, and if you do add to positions and chase, or you buy wrong, or you don't know your time frame, a down day like today that really, in the scheme of things, isn't much, could hurt you, especially if you're a trader, and especially if you're one that um, maybe doesn't have your tier system correct, or just um, you know not truly um, ingrained in what your process is. Because uh, I heard a lot of people upset today about the market, and <laughs> on TV it's just really funny. You can't even listen to TV anymore. All of a sudden, first down day, people are calling for a 10 to 15 percent correction. Probably the same people that have been calling for it about 400 handles ago. But anyway, I just want everyone to take the action in stride and realize what's really going on here and why you have to make adjustments depending on how you trade on your risk and what you're looking for. Because if you go to the chart of the S&P, take a look here. Okay, first of all, you go back to May. Remember this trend when everyone was calling for a huge correction? We held it. All right, we held the 50-day the majority of the time. This was when we broke out above the 8 and the 21-day, took out 1902, and then you had a quick you know, beeline move all the way to 1955, then came in, played with the 8-day, and then resumed, went up, came in, played with the 8-day, didn't even touch the 21-day, made new highs. So look how extended we were from the 8-day. We closed on Thursday at, what was that, 1985, with the 8-day down here at, um, I don't even know exactly where it was, 19, it's about 25 handles above. So if you go balls to the wall long here, or if you, you know, cost average shorts up this entire time, you're probably covered on the close, and then today happened. What does today look like or mean? It does not mean much. What it means is we need to come in probably and touch the eight days, so if you're buying a little early, you got to be a little careful, all right? Each time that we've stair-stepped higher, when we pull off a little bit much, you know, you, you then have a pullback, and no one truly knows what size the pullback is going to be, that's why you, know, you don't really want to start buying the first dip after a multi-week rally that's well above the macro, intermediate, and even the accelerated trend. So you might as well at least wait for a test, wait to see you know, if we do hold in here and, and perhaps come in and test a trend line or, or maybe even see a little bit lower towards uh, the prior breakout. So at this point, one down day you know, before earnings season starts and people are already crying. We'll see. Something I heard people pointing to here was the Russell, okay? And I know the Russell um, was a laggard today, but it hasn't led this entire year. Sometimes it's a headwind, sometimes it's not. This is when, uh, you know, you had that false breakdown and it held the 200-day, and then you had that quick move up, and then this is when the trend changed, okay? And it's been hugging the eight-day moving average since. So when you get a decisive close below, doesn't mean you get short. Doesn't mean you say, I'm going to be out of the stock market in the next few months. You say, okay, I'm going to be a little bit more tactical now. Because if you judge this thing kind of like this, okay, and you use tight stops, all right, and you play for just, say, continuation, all right, here on, on this little pullback, remember this right here? Okay, if you were playing for continuation, you needed to be involved only if you were holding above this 114, and here was your continuation into highs. So now, if you look here, if you were playing for continuation, saying I'm going to use 118.89 because I think we're really pent up and we're going to stay in this really tight, um, you know, chase them up type tape. Once we went below 118.89, that trade changed. Does it mean it's all over for the Russell? No. But if you have upper level stops, this was your area to get out of the way to see, you know, if the 21 day gets tested, because remember this outside day, the last time everyone in the world said, okay, look at this outside day, run for the hills, which it was a day to take notice. The next day we opened down, reclaimed the prior low, and then the trend resumed. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. What we do know is we broke the eight day, we're above the 21 day, strong markets tend to track the eight and the 21 day, and if you lose the eight day, maybe you, you Get rid of some tears. If you lose a 21 day, maybe get tactical. So this way, if you do test lower levels, you get to use them as opportunities versus buying here and getting stuck and capitulating it out all the way towards the lows. Bios pretty much did the same thing. Okay, you had your first potent down day, but look where we came from. Look at that tight range. This is, you know, this was your exit strategy in the IBBs when it broke the 21 day moving average here and broke this trend. 
And then here you had your red drug reversal, and this is when it triggered above this tiny pennant, and it's been following the eighth day. So what did it do today? If you were playing for continuation, and look how stretched we were from the eighth day, you know what, and you had too much size, today probably hurt you. If you bought when we broke above here, or broke above here, or broke above there, even when we broke above here, on day three, you know my process, I, I usually it's a feeler, then an ad, then I sell some or get out, and then I cry if we go higher, but if you <laughs> sell into a day three after a multi-stair step, you're better off because then you don't care about a day like today. So now the question is, does it lead to more selling? And at this point, nobody truly knows, but you know, this was potent, much more potent than we've seen. So get out of the way. Some people might go home short and that's fine. Okay. Now we'll see whether this day stays in control. How do we know that? Whether it stays below at least 50% of the range. And if it's really weak, it'll stay below the bottom third. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll know the pivot tomorrow, which is 258.30. We'll see if it opens below, comes back above or opens above and they sell it. It goes below. We'll figure that out. But for right now, you know, this trend, the accelerated trend, because that's what it is. Right now, you have two different trends here for the bios. You have from the low here, you really have like some kind of intermediate trend, which it's not even near. And then you have the accelerated trend that guys like myself try and ride, which might be a little bit more risk averse. And if that breaks, then you get some corrective activity. Know what trend you trade. So with that said, you know, lots of stocks are acting a bit differently. Last week, two stocks started to show relative weakness. Two stocks that we trade very often. Two stocks, if you're on the VTF or you follow me on Twitter, you could probably think, what did Red Dog say? Were well, two stocks that showed relative weakness that he'd rather have lead the tape? One, Tesla, right? We talked about how that ascending channel broke below 235 before the market even broke lower. So that was a sign to get out of the way. Maybe you see some corrective activity. And if you look at Tesla here, on this day, okay, look at this day. This was July 1st. Did Tesla go up on July 1st? Okay, no. What did the spiders do on July 1st? Where is July 1st? This is July 3rd. This is July 1st. So on July 1st, the spiders went up and made a new high and cleared the range. That's what the spiders did on July 1st. What did Tesla do? It had an inside day, a red day after a topping tail and did not show leadership. So that had to put you on at least alert, alert. You know, when, when momentum trades move fast and momentum leaves, you freaking get ready to leave also. And that was right here, 238. If you miss that, 235. And now we're a little bit below the 21 day. So for me, you know, I did try it today to go green and it didn't work. So I lost a little or I got flat. Now I'm going to see, you know, can we be a buyer of this area? So tomorrow we'll see how we open up, you know, we're open down. But you know, you're pivoting now, 220.40. I would love to see it down open and maybe it goes positive this time for a trade. But now it's no longer a pent up awesome tight trade like we had here that gave you a two day move. It is now a bit broken and needs to figure itself out and come up with a new pattern. Facebook also, relative weakness. Look what Facebook did here. Okay, Facebook broke its ascending channel. Okay, what was this? Was this, uh, so on July 1st, this one actually held in there. Didn't break out with authority like the spiders. And then look at July 2nd. <laughs> July 2nd, pow, broke its ascending channel here. So that was a sign to get out of your momentum shares. Okay, let's see what the spiders did on July 2nd here. July 2nd, I think this was the first. So on July 2nd, the spiders, okay, had an inside day, held its breakout, didn't fall apart, right? Let's just show it like this. So this was July 2nd. Okay, let's go to there. Just to, just to point out what a relative weakness. So this looks pretty healthy, right, as of July 2nd. Right? Held the prior breakout, prior breakout here. The spiders, 196.60, looking decent. What did Facebook do on that day? Facebook, July 2nd. This happened. Same day, right? July 2nd. Does this look the same as the spiders? No, this shows you weakness. This shows you something a little troubling in short-term trading land, which is what a lot of us do. Because you know, if you're in it from way back when, when we talked about you know, it back here on the gap and go from earnings and you've been holding it, and you know, this really doesn't matter too much to you. This is your accelerated trend though. Here's your intermediate trend. So yes, if it broke this and it can come in, if you're uh, an investor or someone that goes longer time frames, it doesn't matter to you because you don't trade the market every single day and you're probably not even a VTF member. But if you're trading this, this, you know, this, this trend line here, 
got to be a little bit more careful. This is giving you a little bit of a sign that something's changing. Hopefully you changed here, and now it's on the 21 day, which it's held a few different times. So the question is, will it you know, give you a false breakdown and come back above it, or will it close below and then start to weaken further? We'll look at that. Remember we tried to play LinkedIn and it hurt me last week. I lost money trying to play a breakout on LinkedIn. And you know, today it came back in and just messy still. I didn't trade it once today because when things should break out and they don't, you know, you take a little notice. And the spiders had a really big move, didn't it, on, uh, on last week? And what did LinkedIn do? It could, couldn't really get out of its own way. So you take a little bit of a signal there and um, today it broke below and you get out of the way. It's still a, you know, above the 21 day, it's just a choppy mess. So you trade it a little less. Something that did work today, um, which I posted the chart on Red Laurel Access around 9.15, was I refreshed the Apple chart. A chart that's been unbelievable, a chart that's been giving us opportunities and using a tier system and staying with and for swing traders, active traders, people using price points, people who, who just were in from the last earnings report that said, oh, Red Dog said iPhone to head probably 100. Let me stay with it because he tends to have sometimes big calls out there and, you know, and this one so far so good. You go to Apple. Okay, I didn't come up with it out of the blue, but this was your gap up, a pro gap showing you a new direction, even though it came from lower. And then from here, big move sideways, another move, another flag, another move. This is the post split pull back. And then we talked about the descending channel that it broke above. And then today I talked about the bull flag in Apple. Okay, doesn't it look like a bull flag? Right, not too difficult to look at. A bull flag right ahead of the old high. So this was trade one to back to resistance that needed a rest. And then what did it do for three days went sideways, the eight day caught up a little bit. Then today I said, you know what? If it gets above 94.10, chances are it could get above the prior 2014 high. So no, you know, 94.10 was one pivot to trade around and maybe add once it went above it pre, or when it got above 95.05, played around and then held it, and then you got another trade. So lots, to, and it showed relative strength all day long. So it's something really nice to stick with today in Apple. So does it mean it's gonna be at 100 this week? I'm not sure, but does it mean that it went out strong, closed well on a weak tape? Good book says to take it home, you take some home. Maybe you don't take home as much as you had cheaper, but you stay with that trade because to me, you know, even though it was so strong, it's not, it's not on day four, five, six. It just, if you go back to it, you will see three days sideways. So this typically is the feeler. Remember I talk about my process. This was my feeler on Thursday. I went long Apple again. Okay, said I like this now. I'll be buying it in here and maybe add to it if it clears the flag. So here's your buy, here's your ad. I didn't take home as much as I had within here, and now I'm sticking with it, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. But anyway, that's Apple. Blackberry, you know, this is, this is kind of a, a good little lesson, because, you know, Blackberry here, all right, I, I liked it also. I did like Blackberry here, and, um, you know, this was a, a nice setup. I think I got involved in it here. It went sideways, added here. You know, it looked as if it was going to go back then, above $11, it was gonna be a great trade, and then this happened, and that happened, and I think I got stopped out somewhere around there. And I, I lost a decent amount of money. So in my head, I said, you know what? Blackberry is horrendous. I make fun of people who use it on the train. I, I, you know, whatever, if you have one, I'm sorry, but I, I do think there's better functionality in other uh, handheld devices. So got out of it, and then you look what happened to Blackberry one more time. Blackberry started to go sideways here, and then it just turned into a disaster. I don't even remember fully, maybe I was done with it. Maybe, I, I don't even know if I held it into this spot, but this should have been your stop there around 921. Didn't work, wasn't pent up, didn't trade through this $11 level. Ignored BlackBerry, I don't know, for a few months, and finally reported earnings and had this, okay? I said to myself, look at this. BlackBerry gapped up, they tried to sell it off, it couldn't. To me, this looks like a nice trade get BlackBerry back on the radar. The old school Red Dog would have been like, you know what, I don't like BlackBerry. BlackBerry got me three months ago. I lost so much money. This stock has my name. It knows when I'm in it. It doesn't know when I'm in it. Anyway, went back to it. You know, you saw a nice pattern again here where you had a, a little bit of a bull flag set up, holding tight. Think right around here is when I got back involved around 10.01 on this day. Then I had a nice move, nice two-day move, nice percentage, probably made back a lot of the money that I lost in here. 
then stayed with it, and then pow, another nice move. And this time it actually cleared this level here. Okay, and I do think it could still get to 13 to 14, but it might need to rest a little bit. But the moral of the story is just because I lost money and BlackBerry wasn't ready here, I didn't not go back to it there. So that's you know, something that I worked on and, tw and tweaked. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I had this stock yesterday. And then it works the following day, and you don't get back in it because you're like, I hate that stock. It just wasn't ready. You don't hate the stock. Hate's a strong word. Anyway, you always have to you know, take little hints when things change. And even you know, this ISRG, we talk about breakout failures and why I don't like them. Okay, look what ISRG did. ISRG was a nice trading stock from here, right? Looked like it was going to get above 378, and it did. Went sideways. I think I was along on this day, and I sold a little bit into that day or something like that. And what did it do? It pushed a little bit further than filling the gap. And in order for this to have been valid, in my humble opinion, in order for this to have shown you know, strength for continuation, typically you hold the top third or half of this breakout price. What happened on this day? Boom. Should this have come in this far? Not in my opinion, not in my rule book. So that would have been like, okay, this is over now. A laggard stock probably had its retracement, and that would have been it. So look what happened next. Boom. Into the base. Breakout failure. Not ready to go. So next thing to look at was big time support going sideways. And that's what happened here. Broke below. So, you know, just some things to notice along the way. Same thing happened with this Faye. Remember when we were trying to buy a pullback and sometimes things should happen or things shouldn't happen. Okay, at this top in Fay, when you had the breakout here and it got negated, that was your king and queen's formation to sell. Then it looked like it was going to try and hold support and then you could have sold it here. Okay, and then I remember a lot of us were looking at it right here. Okay, go sideways. Look, look at this day. Okay, look like, all right, look at this Fay. Maybe we have a feeler. Maybe there's a day one. Look at that going sideways. It came all the way in from 95. This is the time. Have a feeler. If it closes above uh, 66.41, we could add to it for a retracement back. What happened the next day? Boom. Should you have stayed in this stock? No. It engulfed this day. This day became meaningless. And if you got out here or you had it overnight and you said, okay, I'm done with it, you probably lost money, but would you have lost more money? A lot more money if you got stubborn and kept buying it and said, I can't believe this, I can't believe this. So anyway, always small signs. Same thing happened here. Remember this day? I remember this day. I was longer and I got stopped out here below 75. A lot better than the move down here before maybe trying it again here to get stopped out. So anyway, you know, even fast forward to this stock, um, there's been some decent trades along the way, but also with this one here, if, if this were to, to stay a little pent up, it should never really came back in and and uh, you know, got back below this little doji here, or at this point, it, it broke this small you know, retracement bounce back. But anyway, so it was saying how when, you know, if it was gonna be that pent up and continue, it, it could have acted better. So there are things to acknowledge while you're trading a certain stock to see if the character stays the, the same, or even whether you just have to look back and wait. Some of the banks did come off the lows today. I'm, you know, I'm still in Bank of America. Um, you know, uh, not the best place to be, but I got long on this day. I did sell some strength, so I'm hanging out in here. Maybe a few more days of consolidation. If, uh, for some reason, you know, we get some decent economic reports. Or Wells Fargo acts okay. Maybe it continues. I've been back thinking somewhat constructive on this stock ever since this gap upheld here, but it hasn't been that easy. If you did, again, if you sold, look at this breakout failure. Look at this. Three different sectors, three different breakout failures, but the same result. Get out of the way. And then you had a trend break right there. So now we'll see what happens there. This little top and tail led to some weakness. And now we'll see if it creates a new pennant. So all in all, today was not the end of the world. Only if some people bought wrong or people chased or had too many shares or this and that or fell asleep, you know, going into July 4th weekend. Um, you saw the bios and you saw the Russell below the 8th day. All right, we'll see if they hit the 21 day. And if they, do, if they do go towards the 21 day, I'm sure the spiders might hit the eight day. So this is not the day just to start buying a dip, considering, again, in the spiders. Um, this is, you know, one red day. It might lead to another one. You know, and there's your eight day, 196.81. So you still have about 70 cents before perhaps testing 
the eight day moving average. So maybe you don't want to get in too early. Same way, you know, you might not want to just be pressing the shorts there too for a move to the 21 day, which we did see back here. So just a, another day in the life. Hopefully you were in the right place, right time. You maneuvered correctly. It's a summertime. If you're overdoing it, don't go to the beach, have some fun because the weather is nice and there's no reason to, you know, bang your keyboard around if you're not seeing it. Hopefully you, you readjusted some of your systems and you had a nice long holiday and you're coming into the second half of this year fresh because it's earnings season. There's going to be a lot to do and you have to be thinking clear to uh, benefit from it. Have a great night. Scott Redler, T3 Live. See you tomorrow morning with Brittany.